When you're dealing with older equipment, there's always something. And uh, this is something that, you know, I, I had heard a noise, couldn't figure it out. And I have this theory that if something's making a noise and you can't figure it out, it'll, um, it'll eventually present itself to you. And that's exactly what happened. I was driving along and all of a sudden I saw a yellow liquid shooting out of the side of the tractor. From back there, I didn't know if it was coming from the carburetor or where it was coming from. I just shut the tractor off, ran and grabbed a hose because I thought maybe, you know, I, I know my carburetor's leaking, so I didn't know if just like something was pressurized and fuel was spilling everywhere. There was some steam. Um, and when I got back here, I noticed where it was coming from. And that's what I'm gonna show you here. Uh, what was happening was I was hearing a ticking noise. Couldn't figure out where it was coming from. I've now uh, figured it out. The fan on the tractor, uh, for whatever reason, the bearing that the fan spins on is loose, so it's moving with the belt. As that fan moves, it's been hitting the screw that holds the, um, the radiator hose onto the, um, where it goes into the headers here. So what happened was something came loose in there. I'm not sure what. I'm going to take that apart and try and figure it out. And what I was getting was coolant leaking everywhere. So I decided to just put the hose on the ground here uh, because a lot of coolant came out just to help uh, dilute the coolant and, and wash it away. Uh, this is regular car coolant, so it's not like the super environmentally safe kind, but it's also not horrible for the ground. I just didn't want a, a, a large saturation of it sitting right here. So these have a bolt on the bottom of the battery box right here. If you undo that, this will swing wide open. And you don't have to take the battery off. I did just because it makes it easier to, to work without having that big battery sitting there. I set the battery on the ground. Um, and now I need to figure out what exactly is leaking here. I'm wondering if the reason why my fan is loose is a water pump issue, which would be a water pump thing. If it just simply overheated, there's a chance that that could have been my problem here. But I am gonna release this hose and see if maybe, it could just be that as the fan was spinning around and hitting this part here, it loosened the hose, but I'm gonna check the hose for cracks. If I don't see any cracks in the hose and I can tighten this back, I might try and run it again. I, it's a little iffy because this, the way that this fan is moving makes me kind of feel like I might have a problem with my water pump. If the fan is in fact attached to the water pump, it's, it seems like the belt feeds a combination of things right here. I, the only other things I see on the belt or the alternator and the drive shaft, it would make sense that that is my water pump and I might be overheating this thing. I don't have a thermostat on it, so um, there's really no other way to tell if it's overheating other than the coolant flying everywhere. But it, it still seems unusual that the coolant would have come out of this spot. I thought there was a high pressure valve somewhere else on this that the coolant would rather come out of. Um, yeah, right here. Seems like the coolant would come out of there and leak down if this was an overheating situation. If my water pump has completely busted and that's what caused this, then I may be doing a much larger repair. I haven't gone online to look at how much a water pump for one of these costs, but I'm sure it's not super cheap. You watch our channel a lot. You've probably seen me use these Southwire 12 in one screwdrivers. These things are awesome. I'm gonna put a link below for you. I use these for just about everything I do. Now, if I can get that further back. Oh, okay. 
that's still I am not seeing a leak in that hose Let's see if I can get it to stop leaking by tightening this down now there's a chance that just by this fan blade being able to hit that I was causing this to loosen up and I, and I have a feeling that's where um, my leak came from but my my bigger question and my larger concern is why is this even able to move it doesn't seem like that should be able to move the way it is get down in there and look and feel free to comment and tell me if this is supposed to have some give in it because i i really don't know is the bolt coming loose or it seems like it's turning inside there and the only reason why I'm opening this up right now is because I, I know that my coolant levels are already pretty low and the pressure has been released. It came right out the side here is where it came. And it, it leaked out the bottom of this hose here. But again, I'm not finding any cracks in the hose. So I'm, I'm thinking that my Problem, my problem number one was from this fan blade wiggling a little bit it was able to hit this this came loose and um, the pressure of the coolant was released and it came out because that pressure gets under that, that coolant gets under high pressure I, I don't believe that it was overheating before then because if it was there's a um, a valve there's a hose right here that comes out the side of this cap it, it would have built up and come out and down there so I, I'm feeling relatively confident about adding coolant to this and giving it another try at running however it doesn't change the fact that I'm a little concerned about this fan now that's pushed tight against it I can move it it's like about a quarter inch there um, so you know feel free to comment me and let me know but I, I think that this is telling me that I need to take this apart get in there and replace that water pump I, I don't really know how this whole thing works but it looks like this is a water pump back in here and if it's not pumping effectively, I want to be able to fix that so that I, I don't overheat my motor. I'm sure my motor is already um, damaged enough. I, I probably need to do a rebuild kit on this thing. I wanted to do that last winter, but um, the opportunity wasn't there. So it's going to have to make it by another season before I can get in there and rebuild this thing. But um, if the, if that is a sign of a bad water pump, I want to get on it because I don't want to wreck the block, but I'm going to try and add some coolant back to this and see how it works. When it comes to coolant, uh, you'll notice that, you know, some cars have red coolant, some cars have green coolant. Uh, the type of coolant that I really should be putting in here is just a general green coolant. Uh, I don't have any on hand. What I do have is this Dexcool GM. We, we, this is the type of coolant that goes in our Tahoe. This coolant um, also cools the uh, transmission on the Tahoe. So that's a very important thing to take into consideration when you are uh, working on a, a vehicle of any kind is what kind of coolant should be going in there. They do make a Ford cool, a, a coolant designed for Ford trucks and things. You could probably use that in one of these old Ford 3000s. Because I don't have the green coolant, and I'm probably going to end up having to do a bigger repair to this, I'm just going to go ahead and add the Dex Cool that I have. The Dex Cool is definitely a more expensive coolant, and I'm right now I'm probably mixing the two. Again, this isn't the best 
scenario, but it is better than trying to operate this thing without any coolant. Um, they all kind of do the same thing in the long run. This doesn't have anything that says you're full here. But what I might do in the future here is um, a repair to the coolant system of this tractor because if I'm going to eventually rebuild the tractor and replace the, the, the piston rings and things like that, I'm going to want to make sure that the coolant system is operating uh, pristinely before I do that anyway. So obviously I've got some issues here. Um, I'm not sure if that should be able to have some give in it uh, back and forth like that. And uh, you know, if I start this up and run it for a bit and the pressure of the coolant blows this out again, then I'm going to know that I'm, I definitely have a bigger problem and I need to go ahead and do a repair before I do anything else. But uh, this tractor needs a bit of an overhaul. It's not, if you, if you learn how to do this stuff your, yourself, it's not super expensive. I mean, as you can see, this tractor is designed for uh, easy access to everything. Um, but I know that I'm, I, I've got some headers, some valve head issues in there because it goes through oil like a son of a gun on it. I, I know I've got a coolant issue now, but I don't know how bad of a coolant issue that is yet. This tractor, as you can see from home mechanics over the years, has lots of random little <laughs> rubber attachments and pieces holding it together. It needs a carburetor rebuild. I'm just to that point with this thing where I need to uh, do a little more thorough maintenance to it. But if I can get it through another season before having to do some of that, I will be grateful. As many of you home farmers probably feel when you can get through a season with a tractor. Another thing I probably need to do is um, my, my positive battery cable has busted away. What happened was probably this bar in here, it crossed the two and melted that off. To give you an idea, the electricity of a battery is powerful enough. It actually, uh, when I was working on our boat, it melted part of my ring, left a pretty bad burn on my finger. Uh, just from accidentally while tightening down on one side of the battery, hitting it with the wrench, and my wrench hitting my finger, boom. Um, so you gotta be careful. Uh, you might think DC power is not <coughs> very hot, but it will get you. So I'm gonna start this up and just see how it runs for a bit. Hopefully I can get the job done that I need to get done today and uh, keep this thing running for a while until I can get around to doing some, some more major overhauls to it. 